everybody, my name is Leafies and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be making the safest pandemic bunker in Minecraft. Obviously, this video to had, takes no inspiration from current events, and I'm just going to prepare just in case my Minecraft world suffers a pandemic. What am I going to do about it? I'm going to make the safest bunker ever, and we're going to fill it to the brim with great stuff to help us survive, such as security, farms, all sorts of good stuff to help us. Obviously, this video is somewhat, maybe, possibly inspired by current events. Uh, but but nobody really knows that, do we? Before the video starts, I just want to briefly say this is not a joke. I don't want to make the coronavirus into a joke in all seriousness. It is a very serious current situation right now, and you should stay inside. You should not treat it as a joke. You should stay inside, wash your hands, and listen to what the government tells you. I'm not qualified to tell you anything, but I have linked the more qualified people. I've linked the World Health Organization links down below so you can learn more if you need to. This video is probably going to have a little coronavirus link as well. It's not a joke. I just intend to entertain with no offensive purposes. If you think this video will offend you, then please click off right now. It is not my intention to offend you, and I don't want to do so. Stay healthy, wash your hands, and stay aware. Stay safe. Hope you enjoy the video, making a bunker in Minecraft. I do not want to make a joke in the situation. It's just all for fun. Hope you enjoy. Okay, so maybe this isn't the world's most subtle button, but I think it's a job done. We got this little nice thing so I don't lose the button. I was just going to put it on a stone wall, but I feel like I might lose the button. So we do have this lovely little job door. We can walk inside our bunker and then press this very inconvenient button that will be fixed soon to close the door right behind us. So now we actually have to make a bunker because this this isn't enough space to do anything. So we're going to have to actually fill this up with some nice decor and let's get into the actual builds. I'm not really good at building so uh, let's pray for the best. Alright, we have finally, I finally found a design that I kind of like and I think I did a decent job. Like, it could be better, we have this little button right here on the top that can just open up the door for us whenever we need to go out. Uh, and yeah, this could look better. I could just do that and patch it up a little. But for the most part, this doesn't look that bad. So now that we have our bunker, it's time to add all the things we need for this kind of situation. A pandemic is no, it's no laughing matter. So we need to be prepared. The first thing that we need, obviously, is the most important thing. Toilet paper farms. Now, a lot of you may know this, but toilet paper has become one of the most important currencies of our planet right now. So it's important that we have a farm of toilet paper so never run out. Which means, of course, sugarcane farm. And because it is, uh, in fact, 1.14, Xerotech farms do still work. But since they are patched and want this bunker to be awesome for all use in all versions, a bit of we're going to just make a basic sugarcane farm, and I later. think it could look really, really cool if we do it right. Okay, after, again, too much work, I actually managed to get this design. It isn't the most effective sugarcane design, because it only has sugarcane grow up one high. And it only works when this one grows, but it does look really, really, really cool with the holes and everything. Like this little sea lantern vibe. I love it. It looks so cool. And the collection area is just down here. You step on these depressor plates and you access the chest just like so. So let me demonstrate how this works real quick because I'm not going to wait for the sugar can to grow. That's boring. So if I were to just make these grow a little. And uh, this was a bit hard to do. I had to get some like sand stuff. But really, I have a bit of thought provoking, but it wasn't hard at all. So I just placed this here like that. You can see all that gets collected. If I just place this here like that, you can see all of that gets collected, assuming I don't get it. And now we can just replace our lovely windows, just like so. And then when we hop into our chest, you can see it is slowly being filled up. Uh, that is an exception, because it landed on the block. I could, I, could put, I could put glass here. I could, like, fill it with big boy glass if I wanted to. So now that we have that done, uh, I think it's time to move on to the next item of our list. And that is a diamond to gold ATM. And now, you know, we all know I'm rich in diamonds. I got that YouTube ad revenue, you got that rich diamond life. However, after the apocalypse, everything's going to crash, banks are going to crash, we have to convert all our money to gold. It's a funny lesson, gold doesn't lose its value. So no matter how much gold you have, even though it, it, gold doesn't care about inflation, it keeps its value. That's your lesson for the day. So we're going to have to make an ATM in our base that converts our diamonds to gold blocks. So I'm going to say that nine, I'm going to say five diamonds is a gold block. And yeah, time to make an ATM. A few adjustments have been made. We now have this lovely second layer of the bunker. We can just press this little pressure plates and get flung up. You can see the sugarcane chest is no longer here, actually. That's because it's been moved down here to a very nice, like, crate location. We can pick it up. We've got some furnaces. This is obviously just for the slime block thing. I think it looks cool. I could I could make this smaller. In all honesty, I don't know why it isn't smaller. Probably, I might make it smaller in the future. I don't know. I don't really care for now. But I, this is the spot that I've chosen for the ATM. And I don't really know what I want the interface to look like. I think you just give it, you just give it uh, a chest right here with your diamonds. And then it returns 
your gold. So let me just get some item frames and hopefully, actually no, maybe we can just use gold ingots. I feel like that'd be kind of easier. So we can just boom, boom, and boom. So this is actually gonna be quite hard because we have to make sure that it takes diamonds by the five and then converts them to gold. Technically, I feel like I would, it would be kind of easier to just make one diamond equal one gold. Obviously that's not true, but maybe maybe for our Minecraft currency that might be the case because that might that would make things a lot more simple I think, but it's looking a bit difficult. All right, so progress update. I actually did it. I did the beginning thing and I thought, "Wow, this is really simple. I'm really really smart." And then I realized two things that number one, I did it in such a small area, I thought it was a waste of space, so I wanted to do something more. So I decided to get the idea to convert gold to diamonds and diamonds to gold. So it's a double way ATM, you can choose which one you want. You flick this lever, you want to get diamonds, you want to convert gold to diamonds. You flick this lever, you want to convert your diamonds to gold. I also realized I actually have to add an item filter here to distinguish because at the moment it was just any item gets translated to gold which is not what we want so now we have an item filter for the diamonds and we have an item filter for the gold and things are actually going quite well I think I have found a design that uh, works for me and yeah things are going very smoothly which is very always great so after a little bit of redecorating we actually have made some very very good progress so let me show you what we've done I just messed it up for no reason uh, our farm just has been taken away it's produced 26 sugar cane which is lovely and we have this perfectly working ATM. Now, if we go out the side, uh, well, this base isn't beautiful at all. But if we ignore all that mess and we actually look at this, I'll, I'll cover this up, don't worry, it'll look nicer. Uh, we can actually see there is a lot of redstone going on. It's quite cramped back here, but it does, in fact, work. So let me show you how it works. Uh, let's say I want to do diamond to gold. You put it in the diamond chest. Let's put in a. Uh, uh, 17, why not? And you can see that the gold, the diamonds slowly trickle in and become a beautiful, gorgeous 17 gold. Now let's say I wanted to switch, so I would flick this one and then diamond to gold. I mean, oh, gold to diamond, it's down, it's down, it's down. So now you flick it back and you can see, yes, okay, I fixed it, 17 diamonds, easy peasy. Now what, you might be saying, what if we put in a random block? Well, if you put in a random block, don't worry. You can't, you won't, you'll lose your valuables. It's just going to go in here. If you put it in this side and doesn't work, well, it's just going to go in here. The next thing we need for our quarantine bunker is, of course, a shower a and maybe a sink. So honestly, ow, honestly, just a bathroom. Any bathroom would be lovely because we need a sink because it's really, really important to wash your hands and we need a shower to keep clean and keep, uh, I was going to say hydrated, but that's definitely not the right word. It's definitely not keep hydrated. So this, this looks cool. And I got some towels. We got our nice, lovely little thing. We can press this. We can hop into our beautiful graded shower. It, it looks very nice. However, I don't think, I think it's quite too simple. We have to add something to it. There's not much going on here. So I propose we make a pop out of the wall shower. Because I feel like, or, or bathtub, I feel like that would actually be like pretty cool if I could do that. It doesn't have to be big or anything, but let's like something like this, that would look really cool. Like a 2 by 3 shower that automatically fills with water and we push. I feel like that, that has the potential to be really, really cool. So if we can do that, it'd be awesome. So all that, that's actually hard because I have to retract this wall and bring in the shower. So, so it, it is kind of difficult, but let me see... Yeah, let's just see if I can get the job done. I All right, so I have. It is turning out much bigger. This button after right here watching does not some green for nicer, furniture designs, but it is it is looking okay. So what I'm thinking is because the bath is only one block tall, it might be easier. This thing will pop down. This is gonna be covered, but this the walls will pop down, and then this bathtub is gonna come out. So this layer is gonna be pushed down, double piston extender, and then this layer is gonna be pushed out, and it's gonna be double piston extended. And now I'm realizing that if it gets pushed out to here, that's one two. That's that's a triple piston. I need a triple piston extender. I just I was gonna say how I need to mimic a stone button, but I need literally a triple piston extender. After a lot of thought and debate, I thought of a new idea. And now instead of having a triple piston extender, the bath is actually gonna be in the floor like this, and there's gonna be another bath section 
uh, like this. I'm going to make it look nicer. So what's going to happen is this wall is going to get retracted. These stone bricks are actually, these should actually be stone blocks. But these stone blocks are going to be retracted down from the ground. Just like, so they're going to go down to the ground. They're going to be pushed over by this these pistons, these uh, bathtub blocks right here, those bathtubs are going to be pushed up and then extended into the room. And then these bathtub blocks that are going to be right here will be extended into this, pushed up, and then extended into the room. So now everything's in the room. And then that's it. On the closing, uh, just going to be the same thing, except we're going to need a double retraction, which is why we have this double piston extender. It is going to be quite hard to do it with this fit, but I do believe that we can get the job done. Hopefully... Uh, nothing goes wrong. I need triple piston extender right there. Luckily, it is just uh, singular pistons, so it will be easier. And I do hope that I have space for this. I keep falling over. So, funny story, really. Uh, the old world corrupted. It was like whenever I placed blocks in that version, a 1.15.2, that was the version of the world, it would lag so much. My frame rate would drop to like 50 and I could not record. That was like not up to par with the standards I want for my videos. I didn't know that was happening. I switched from 0.14. I booted up the same world and it got reset. All my progress got reset. It did actually corrupt. But I generated this new world 1.14.4. Uh, it looks fine. I don't know what's wrong, but so far this looks good. I found some new terrain. We can make our little thing in. And yeah, I'm going to start off by making ourselves a Jeb door. And if you guys don't know what it is, it's a, we're not going to be focusing much on the outside, the secrecy of this build. We just want to make it safe. We want to make it perfect for a pandemic. And the thing about Jeb doors is that they're really good. It's a very simple way to conceal your build. And if you guys don't know what a Jeb door is, I highly recommend looking it up. If you ever want to make a secret base, a Jeb door with like a redstone torch key is your guy. It was 11 p.m. So after sleeping and waking up in the morning, here we are. We are actually making some really, really good progress with this, and I'll show you guys what I have. It, it does, it is, a. Uh, it's getting quite large, and uh, this is not getting any more secret, but that's okay, that's not the goal. Uh, we have what we have going on, we have what we have going on here. If you press this button right now, you can see that nothing happens, because we're just turning the thing up. But if you turn it on, you can see this drops down, this gets pushed out of the way, this gets moved up, and then pushed out really quite quickly. So that is pretty much the activation sequence for the bathtub. But assuming these blocks are going to be stairs and these blocks are going to be stairs. Uh, so now all we have to do is push these across, move them up, and then boom, we have a bathtub. And then comes the hard part of retracting everything. But so far, uh, obviously this thing needs to be reset manually for the time being. But so far, we do actually have a nice working setup. And I think that if all goes well, I can just press that and... Uh Okay, maybe all didn't go well, but that's that. Nobody cares about that triple piston extender yet. So I have finished after a long, long time, too long. I have finished the opening sequence, and it's only slightly humongous. And you can see though, if we do click this lever right over here, it's not like organized or anything, but or button because buttons are nice. It gets pushed over, pushed up, pushed forward, and then another one gets pushed into place, and that looks beautiful. That looks like actually really, really, really good, and I'm very, very happy with how that turned out moving swiftly towards the closing after an hour and a half of engineering i this is the first official test i i'm gonna put everything in i think i've gotten it down i wanted to see you guys i want you guys to get my reaction to the final product uh the redstone is uh a bit spacious to say the least but i think it all works well i've also had to move the shower button to up one but don't worry guys the most essential part of space the shower still functions and actually, because this is the real deal, let me just place in these stairs. Okay, we press this button, and hopefully I didn't mess anything up. I really hope I didn't mess anything up. I don't think I messed anything up. Hopefully it works. Let's hope it works. Okay, opening, opening, moving it out. It looks nice. Oh, we have a shower. Oh, okay. It doesn't actually feel good thing. That break the redstone. And now we move it in. Come on, come on, come on. This is a retraction. Oh, oh. And it pops back in. That does a delayed reaction. Yeah, I know. I was like, I thought, is something else going to happen? I can't believe it actually works. We want a shower. The wall opens up or a bath. We have a bathtub, a fully good quarantine bathtub. It pops out in perfect shape. We want to retract it back into the wall. Bam. No problem. And then the last thing to do is to fill it up with water and you're good. I don't know if I want to make that automatic, but that just looks so, so cool. I love it. I love the effect. I want. I loved watching this thing. It actually looks so sick. Look at that. It, co it just comes out of the wall. That's actually beautiful. After a lot of consideration, I've decided that I think uh, we're just going to go with the classic water bucket fill system. I'm just going to fill it up nice and easy. Oh, no. That's not good. Luckily, there's no redstone showing. 
likely pleasure plates are immune pleasure plates are immune to redstone. I, I the only way to fill this up I think would be through a dispenser through the floor and then would be visible because uh, the bathtub is right here. So that wouldn't be good. So I have to resort to the old method of just mmm oh yeah look at that bathtub. And then I think that this won't break the redstone if I retract it in because the water source will break. But there's no way I am testing that. So I'm just gonna uh well, that's okay, because I have my lucky bath sponge with me, so boop, and we can put our sponges with that as well. So after we're done having our little bath time, washing up with the quarantine, we can wash our hands, take a nice shower if we so desire, and then we can retract the bathtub right back into the wall, ready to be used another day. So I think this bunker is, I think this bunker is really, really coming together. It's going together well. But there is a few things that's lacking. Number one, it's, it has a significant lack of furniture. We do have mm, this gorgeous bathtub, but there is a lack of furniture and nice seating arrangements. And honestly, a TV would be lovely right now. I'm not really feeling a shower. Just want you to go back into the wall. Also, I do feel like kind of adding like a way for us to exercise and maybe a food farm just in case we have to be here for a while because this toilet paper farm is actually like it's actually producing a significant amount of toilet paper, but I don't think it's going to be enough if you want to stay here because we can't eat toilet paper. That's just silly. And I also want just in case a doomsday escape route. So just in case all goes bad, our bunker gets breached, we can have an extra escape route. Maybe some more security as well. I think that'd be cool. All right, first step completed. We go down here. We can see we actually have some nice furniture. Obviously, not a lot. I want to add some more stuff on the wall, so I'm not going to take up any of that space. And I feel like the center, it just looks nicer open, even though I could be putting stuff in. We have this life bookshelf, crafting table, little bench we can sit and eat. We go upstairs, um, or we go upstairs, and we have an ender chest, all this stuff, nothing really too special. And uh, yeah, a little bit of shelves for our bathtub. But now, the first thing I want to add is an extra layer of security, because in case someone breaks open, Obviously, glass isn't going to stop them, but let's just pretend for the sake of this video. This is actually bulletproof glass right here, so we can put an extra layer of glass right here that can open and close. Well, that idea died really quickly. No, yeah, after a lot of consideration, I've determined I don't think it's possible, especially because the floor of this would have to be removed, so some of this floor won't work. Uh, I do think, though, this, this little blockage right here, I feel like this little safety hatch is definitely feasible like if you got some chemicals like if it's a pandemic chemical we can actually make like a nice little hatch that can dispense a safe roof so like that okay obviously it won't be like that maybe like this yeah 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 okay this this is more like i like this this is actually a fun idea okay so i've decided to change up the theme of this a little so what's gonna happen is this is actually just gonna be like floor so when this is closed it's gonna look like this and it's gonna be very nice and then you can open it up and then boom, there's a secret second story to the entire bunker. And I feel like that would have a really nice effect. The way I want to do this is first, so there's gonna be, it's gonna look like this. So in its entire completed form, this is gonna be the closed form, just like so. We're gonna push this out. So we're gonna retract this. And then I can only assume move it out of the way. And then double extend this back. And now that I think about it, like I was gonna have a bunch of piston pushers because I was gonna do the glass thing, but that's actually very easy. If I just put a sticky piston here, and it's actually really simple. Okay, that's going to be very nice. All right, so all I have to do is, uh, yeah, make this work, and it should be good. Uh, easier so than done, though. This could be, like, very difficult. Turns out it wasn't so difficult, and after 30 minutes, I think I got it. Okay, that was not as bad as the previous one. I say okay to start these clips off a lot, but if we hit this button right here, you can see that this floor actually comes out very nicely. And everything pops right into place, and you can't even tell. There's a second floor here, so I got a very cute idea with this item frame. We're just going to put this in, and boom. And now if you press this button again, we can just hop out. The floor gets retracted, and wow. Would you look at that? I'm not going to fix that. There's nothing I can do about that. It's a whole second layer. And if you want to close it down here, all we got to do is press this button, and the floor closes up all behind us. All nice and snug. And then if you want to do it all over again, we can just press it once more, and then boom. It all comes back just like that very nice very simple very quick very easy and if we always wanted we can hop out then hop out and then close the door behind us once more the redstone for this isn't really that complicated it takes up probably more space than it should I didn't really focus on compactness but it does do the job quite well and yeah that's pretty much the hidden staircase and now I think that looks really good the last thing we need is a food farm and a doomsday escape and yeah I think I think we're gonna be golden and I think we're going to the second floor as well, bottom floor. Oh, 
Oh, that looks nice. Here, yes, 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 yes. Oh, that looks really good. Time for a food farm. After a bit of work, we have completed this farm, and I was gonna do, like, an industrial chicken farm kind of thing, but I thought this would be a cooler, like, apocalyptic-style thing, and I don't know why all the chickens are really loving that light. It's kind of concerning, but if we just hop down here, uh, the redstone is... It's spacious, again, which I'm kind of sad about, but that's fine. We have this little entrance here. It's actually really, really smooth. You can see this nice, lovely little chicken pen thing, and you can just walk in, and the door opens up behind you. Guys, I think I broke it because I was staying on the pressure plate for too long. Oh, that's embarrassing. Okay, I replaced it with buttons. Uh, yeah, a bit less dramatic, but if I press one of these buttons, this should open up, hopefully. Yep. Close up, yes. No! Oh. Oh, wait, that was the opening. Okay, ho I just got it. I messed it up. Okay, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. Button. Let's go. Come on. Pull it up to the sides. Get the dopest thing sender. Ah, oh, and then we can walk in, breed our chickens, have some fun. Maybe lure, close the doors behind us or not, because then we're going to go, go into these chickens, breed them, have some fun, go out, go into these chickens, breed them, get some meat. Easy peasy. And then when we're done, we can just hop right out, press the button. Either one works. And, uh, yeah. Boom! Okay, thank God. That, that actually looks really good. That's really smooth. I really like it. I think we succeeded. That is our farm. And the last thing we need is just a doomsday escape, a doomsday escape hatch. And I'm thinking a flying machine that goes right through the center of the whole build. It just pops out the top and just goes straight out of the whole bunker. So I just had an epiphany. I can't open... I was going to figure out... I, I had a really good idea on how to open this floor really efficiently. And then I realized... I can't open this floor because the flying machine that carries us out of the base, it has to come out of this floor and I cleared a bit of space here. Like this is all a bunch of different runs we can drive. This one is just the elevator or whatever. I can't actually do that. So uh, yeah, that, that's kind of a shame, but I can't make the floor open, which is quite an inconvenience if I do, if I'm honest. However, that being said, if we ignore this mild inconvenience, the ceiling, I feel like, the ceiling, hmm, no, it definitely couldn't open either, because you'd have to have pistons on the top, yeah, I just, I don't think it's possible for the ceiling to open either, unless, and this is the exact same thing you have to do for the bottom, but I'm too dumb to realize, you can just do this, so you'd power this one, you'd retract it up, and then you'd power this one, and then you'd pull it over, or, and then you wouldn't do that, you would actually pull the whole thing over, like that. If I actually, like, separated this. Okay, now, after all of that, you can actually pull the whole thing over, so you just do this. And then you would double extend it, and it'd be out of the way. And then you'd uh, just retract it again, and extend the piston, and we'd be on the wiser. So, after a lot of consideration, I decided to end it off with that contraption. I'll show you guys in a moment what I did. I couldn't install a flying machine, because then I would have to redecorate these floors to non-stickable blocks, and I just didn't want to bother you guys with that. So I ended up making something much nicer in the ceiling. But let's review everything that we have done. So if we were to pop outside right now, the pandemic bunker is fully complete, and I would love to use this thing in a real pandemic. God forbid there ever is one. We have this lovely button on the outside which can toggle open this very nice and hidden cave door. We can then close the moment we get back inside. We can look around, we can rinse off, take a little shower if we need. And if we do truly desire, we can grab ourselves a water bucket sponge and then get a retractable bathtub. This has to be one of the coolest things I think I've ever made in this world, or the, th the coolest thing I have made in this world. We can fill it up with water just like so, and, uh, and before it breaks everything, just quickly suck it up. Uh, oops, I be and we don't even have to break the bathtub like I was going to do. We can just hit the button again, and the bathtub that broke from the water will be retracted into the wall. Like, that's actually so, so cool. After we're done with that, we can then head downstairs. So let's pretend that this thing was closed. We have a now toggleable opening to go downstairs into this lovely little second level of our bunker where we can just live out the rest of our days. We have a sugarcane farm. We can toggle the entrance once again if we so desire. We have a little bookshelf, a little way to get up, except it's closed. And even we have this awesome door where we can harvest our chickens and, uh, yeah, make them breed, get the eggs, get this, get that, and to just walk around, have a merry old time, get all the stuff, lay some eggs, and then take our way out. 
just like so. Just in case gold loses its value, we have this gorgeous ATM right here. We can select diamond to gold or gold to diamond. We're just going to diamond to gold, and we're going to put in 32 diamonds. You can see they all get sucked in. Let's just put in the egg to see what happens. You can see our gold is already filling up. We are converting it with the ATM to diamonds. In the meanwhile, we have this lovely sugarcane chest where we can store all the sugarcane from our farm above. We can just close this up again. And now all our gold has been converted, 32 gold from the ATM. And we can then convert it back to diamonds if we really want to in case diamonds regain their value. But also, our eggs end up right in here. So we never lose any items at all. Finally, when we're done, we can hop out in just in case everything goes bad, in case we wanted to escape. We can hop out of our bunker. Uh, I said we can hop out of our bunker and then activate the tunnel out. And this is actually a really cool contraption. It's really compact. And then it opens a tube. Okay, that was that was cheating. We can open the tube. We when we can fly out and have a merry old time. And that concludes our pandemic bunker. I hope you all have enjoyed. That's a flying machine. I hope you all have enjoyed. This was really fun to make. It isn't the most secret thing in the world, but I think we did do a really good job. That's the redstone for the uh, door on top. It's actually really, really simple, much easier than I was expecting. But thank you so much for watching. If you have made it to the end, I really do appreciate you. And thank you so, so much. Great netherrack war coming up soon for those of you at the end. And yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much for watching. And peace out. Please do consider subscribing if you did enjoy it. See y'all later. And goodbye.